Hi, so what do you do when you've uh, designed a printed circuit board? It's a little board, maybe a power electronic circuit, and then you lay it out, get it manufactured, it comes back, and it doesn't work. You don't get an output on some measurement circuit. Well, um, that has happened to me before and has happened to other engineers, so I'm going to show you how you can prevent that by doing some simulation upfront. In today's example, I'm going to show you uh, a circuit that I have been testing in the lab and I realized I was making one mistake. I was thinking maybe the design might be kind of wrong, but that doesn't make sense because it worked in a previous design, uh, like an actual test bench. But for me, in my test bench, not working. So I'll show you how to simulate uh, measuring the current that goes through a sensing resistor. So in ORCAD Capture, go to File, New, Project. And you want the project to, you know, whatever you want it to be, call it Current Sense. Enable Piece by Simulation, and then select the folder that makes sense. So we'll go with Current Sense. Select Folder, click OK. Choose to create a blank project and click OK. So just as a reference, we're going to be using the circuit like this. And let me give you an idea of how it works. You uh, have a circuit where the current sensing resistor only 100 ohms. There's a current that goes through it. And we are actually going to measure the voltage drop across this 1 ohm resistor. And that voltage will then go into an op amp and be amplified by 15 or 16x and then come out and get measured that way. So we use our voltage probes to see what the output, the amplified uh, current looks like. Really, it's amplifying an input voltage. But we can just do uh, Kirchhoff's voltage law, Kirchhoff's current law to calculate the current. Okay, so let's go and make sure we're on page one of the schematic. Then you would go to place piece by components. There are parts you can place that can't be simulated, and there are parts you place that that may, that can be simulated. So piece by component. If you just go to part, it's a toss up on whether the part can be simulated or not. You need to choose from maybe the analog library, and then you'll get this little symbol to let you know that it has a piece by model. We're not gonna go through all that. Let's go with generic simulatable components. Let's go to place, piece by component. We need a piece by ground. So we'll place a couple grounds here, according to my reference circuit. So we'll place our P-SPICE grounds here. And then P-SPICE component, I need some resistors. So I'll need my 15 kilo ohm resistor, uh, 1 kilo ohm over here, 1 kilo ohm here, 100 ohm here. I'll rotate with R on my keyboard, right click and mode. So if you want to rotate any component, you can hit R on your keyboard. Just as I'm placing the parts, I'll double click on the text and turn it to 15 kilo ohms. Use the right mouse button to zoom in by right mouse button, click holding and dragging a specific area. And there you can see things better. So let's add a generic operational amplifier. Go to place piece vice component discrete and choose op amp. Now I'm going to flip this uh, horizontally. Do that with H. On the keyboard and I place it somewhere around there hit escape to get out of that mode and now mm, I need a DC voltage source I can also use a direct current source but I prefer DC voltage source VDC so go to place piece by component source voltage sources DC place that over there hit escape now I'll wire these components together um, I'll choose place wire over here, or I can go to place wire from the menu, or I can hit W on my keyboard as a shortcut. All right, so I'm gonna start clicking in these white boxes to make a connection, starting from the components, All right? And we're just uh, laying this thing out like in the reference schematic. Hit escape to just break off that wire 
uh, prematurely. Now I'm going to move this op amp up and down, but thing is, if I do that, I'm going to cause a connection, create unintended connections. So I may not do that just like that. I might just uh, pull this wire down, drag the corner of this wire down. And let's clean this up a bit. Let's go ahead and play some diode. So I'm going to place piece bias component diode, rotate with R, rotate with R, place those in those direction. W on the keyboard to wire these diodes up. So let's go ahead and do it like this. And I can rotate this resistor. Okay. Sometimes when you rotate apart, it gets disconnected, so you have to reconnect it. You can also drag wires to connect things. And I'll place this ground over here under this power supply. I mean, this voltage, DC voltage. All right, this looks good. Let's hit save with control S or save icon over here. Now let's start the new simulation profile. We'll do a DC sweep. Let's go to PSPICE new simulation profile and I'll do a DC underscore sweep. That's what I'll name it. Inherit from none. Root schematic is schematic one. That's referring to this folder on the left here in the project window and click create. So with this simulation, I want to choose a uh, DC sweep, make sure analysis is selected for your box there, not configuration files, but analysis. Then under, then under analysis type, choose DC sweep. For the voltage source, let's choose a name. The name of the voltage source that we'll be sweeping the values for is on the schematic. Do you know the name of it? It's V1. So let's do capital V1. I don't know if it's case sensitive or not, so that's worth checking. Actually, we can check now. Let's do underscore V1. For the sweep type, I want to sweep linearly. I want to linearly sweep the voltage from 0 to 250 millivolts. Why 250 millivolts? Because that's going to give us an appropriate current range, a voltage range to amplify without saturating the op amp. The op amp will saturate at 5 volts on the output, so we're trying to keep it under 5 volts. All right, so zero, the end value will be 0 0.250 milli, I mean, 2.0.250 0 .0 volts, and the increment will be 0 0.010 volts. Click apply, then click OK. Now I'll place some names on these wires. So choose place net alias, and then one of the names will be out. Click OK, place it on the output of the op amp. The other name, I'll do a control E while I'm still in net alias placement mode, and I'll call that sense. Click OK. Escape to end that mode, save with control and S. Now we have to run the simulation. Go to P Spice Run. Here we don't have anything showing up on the screen. Why is that? Well, this is like an oscilloscope screen. An oscilloscope won't see any signals unless you put probes in the oscilloscope and then put those probes onto the circuit. So we are simulating with real life. So let's go to P Spice markers voltage level. And I want my output voltage level. Let's see. Let's see if my input voltage, my V1, is actually changing as the sweep intended. Right click and mode. I'm going to look for this going from 0 to 250 millivolts. So I'm looking for this red signal on my simulation window, my oscilloscope, my oscilloscope. Click on here. And indeed, it is going from 0 to 20. Yeah. Yep. Uh, 260, 250 millivolts right around here. So it is increasing. This V sense. V out is the amplified signal. It's a signal amplified by some 16. Um, a factor of 16 and then it goes up to about 4 volts at its maximum. That's great. It gives us some headroom ab uh, below the 5 volts so that there's minimal clipping. There's no clipping. All right, that looks great. So yeah, that is how you'd simulate a circuit. You can do a time domain simulation for this, a DC sweep simulation, it's up to you. There's so many different things you can do. But at least with this, 
I realized in my actual real circuit in the lab that I just I had two I had too huge a voltage going across this sensing resistor for the op amp. That was it. I so really the problem was me not realizing what I was doing. This is a great way to test and debug that your circuit design is uh, makes sense and works or should work. And if it's a hardware testing problem or a chip problem or a PCB layout problem, this, keep, this takes you one step closer to uh, fewer things to troubleshoot to a design that works right the first time. Okay, so thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, whatever, leave them in the comment section. And um, yeah, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it so that, other so that other engineers can see it as well. Thanks again for watching. Have a good one.